In this video, we're going to go through an overview of how X2Vol works, both from the administrative side and from the student side, so you can get a good idea of the workflow in the system. Now, please keep in mind we do have other training videos that dive in a little bit deeper into each one of the topics that I'm about to cover. Now, I'm currently signed in as a school administrator, so what you're seeing here up at the top are functions that are related to what a school administrator can do. Now, the first thing that you'll see when you log in is the dashboard. And here on the right hand side is our bulletin board feature. Now, this is a great feature where you can communicate to your students anything that's service related, whether that's new opportunities that have become available or maybe a listing of nonprofit um, organizations and their contact information uh, so that students can reach out to those organizations. The opportunity section up here at the top next to dashboard is a place where you can post school sponsored opportunities. So this might be something that's happening on campus and you need volunteers, or this can be something that you post on behalf of another organization. We have ongoing opportunities as well as scheduled opportunities. Scheduled opportunities allow you to basically have a set number of volunteers that you need where spots fill up for certain days, times, and shifts and ongoing is a little bit more loose, a little bit more open-ended where you can just have a date range and some instructions on what the volunteering opportunity is. So that's one way that a student can log hours. There are two other ways that a student can log hours and one of those is uh, what we call a personal activity and we'll look at that here in just a second. But the third way that a student can log hours is by signing up for something that a nonprofit organization has posted. Now, you can invite nonprofit organizations as a school administrator to register with X2Vol. Uh, they would then go through a verification process. Uh, the X2Vol team will verify them to make sure that they're a legitimate nonprofit. And then they'll show up for you here under the manager section under approve organizations. So once you approve an organization, Anything that they post will be viewable by the student, but you do have that control. You have the ability to block them or approve them so that only organizations that you want to post to your students can do so. Okay, so next let's take a look at the groups and goals section up here at the top. This is really the core of X2Vol. One of the first things that you'll do when you set this up for your school is create your goals for each one of your groups. Now groups are typically your class groups. So you'll have your freshmen, sophomore, seniors, etc. Or maybe you have a middle school or another school where you will want to divide those up by grade level. Now within those groups, you'll want to set up one or multiple goals for the students to work towards. So when the student logs into their account, uh, depending on what group they're a part of, they're going to see the goals that you have set up for them. So it's important to name the goal something that the students will, will recognize. So again, you might have a four-year goal, as uh, we'll see here in this example here at the bottom. This is the class of 2017. They have a four-year service requirement uh, of 100 hours. Or you may have a yearly goal where you can uh, track and report against uh, a set number of hours that you want those students to do within a year. Uh, or, again, set up something more like a four-year goal. Or you may have multiple goals if you have different types of service that the student is, is logging. So uh, in that process, once you set up your groups and goals, it's important to review that setup with one of the X2Vol service program specialists just to make sure that you're set up for long-term success. Now, before we look at the student side, I want to mention just a few more things you can do as an administrator here. Up at the top under the manager tab, you'll have a section for pending hours, and this is where you will be approving the entries. So once a student submits hours, uh, you'll be able to access those in the pending hour section and approve or deny those. Uh, if you deny them, you can also attach a note um, asking the student to either correct their entry or just letting them know why you're denying their hours. Uh, member lookup is just a way to do a student search. Uh, approve organizations, we've just uh, talked about that a second ago uh, where you can approve organizations to post to your school. Campus Manager, this is a way to add other administrative users in the system. So reporting section, uh, this has a couple of options. Uh, one of the options for reporting is a group and goal report which basically is uh, pulling a specific goal result or the progress towards a goal 
from a particular group. And the date range report uh, is a way to pull the hours that have been done for students from a class group uh, for a particular date range to get an idea of how your students are doing as a whole. So now that we've looked at the administrative side of the system, I'm gonna jump over to the student view. And here is the student dashboard. And you'll notice right away that the menu options up at the top are different. Here a student can see whatever the administrator posted on their bulletin board right away. On the left hand side, they'll be able to see any groups that they're part of and any goals within those groups will be showing here and their progress towards those goals will also be shown. Now the students will spend most of their time in the opportunities and projects section. And here, they'll be able to see any entries that they've done, uh, the hours claimed, and then the hours that were approved by the administrator. Now, if a student wants to find opportunities, they can either click on the Find Opportunities button here up at the top, or they can click on the Find New button here in this bottom section next to community and campus opportunities. So these would be opportunities that were posted by the school administrator at the school or anything that was posted by an outside nonprofit. So let me click on that real quick so I can show you what that looks like. So what you're seeing here is the find opportunities section for students where they will be able to sign up for anything that's been posted by the school administrator, which you can see here are all these opportunities that have the school sponsored flag next to them and also you're gonna find the opportunities that have been posted by nonprofit organizations below that so here you can see there's one called restoration ministries this is an approved organization by the school and it looks like they have posted something here now the difference between the yellow buttons and the blue buttons here is basically that the blue buttons signify a ongoing opportunity and the yellow ones actually have slots that the student would have to sign up for. So they would click on the yellow button and then proceed to select what time slot they want to sign up for. So this section really covers two out of the three ways that a student can log hours. The first being anything posted by the school and the second being anything posted by an approved nonprofit organization. Now the final way that a student can log hours is by far the most widely used in our system and it's called a personal project. And a student can log a personal project by going to opportunities and projects. In their activity log here, there's a button that says create new. So they would click on that. And this is where they would enter all the information related to that personal project that they did. So they would put in an activity name, a project description, there's some interests and career clusters here that they can associate to this entry. Uh, under activity contact, they're required, of course, to put in a name and a phone number or email address. Now, if the student puts in an email address for the activity contact, the system will send an email to that contact with a verification link so that the contact can verify those hours. And those hours will show up as verified uh, when you are approving them in the pending hours section in your administrative account. Now, we have seen instances where the contact does not receive the email, and this could be due to several factors that are out of our control. Some of those factors include the email server or the email filter or settings that the contact has. Uh, do not let those emails through to their inbox. The next section is the claim hours, which will have the date that the student did the service. They'll put in the number of hours and minutes if applicable. And then the reflections piece is here. Now, the reflections prompt that you see underneath here is customizable by school. So if you have certain questions that you want the student to answer in the reflections box, we can customize this area to prompt them to do that. The next section is the apply hours to goals, which will be the student selecting what goal they want to apply their hours towards. So in this case, there's only one, but there may be multiple goals that a student has to select from when they're submitting their hours so that they would do that here in this section. Below that is the oath section, and this is what we call the falsification consequence. The student has to check this box before submitting the entry. So we have a default statement here in the oath and you may have some additional 
consequences per your student handbook that you would like for us to add here. So this section is customizable. If you would like us to change that, please let the X2Vol team know so we can get that updated. Uh, and then as the last piece, they would click submit and those hours would then go to the school administrator for approval in their pending hours section. So that covers how a student would log a personal activity. If a student is logging hours towards something that they signed up for, whether that's for the school or for a nonprofit opportunity, uh, the process is slightly different. Uh, so let me just show you that real quick. If I go to find opportunities and I sign up for, say, something that was posted by the school. So let's look at that real quick. I just clicked on this opportunity where there's three different shifts. I'm going to sign up for this. This is not happening until later on. So I'm going to sign up for it now. It says, do you want to sign up for this event? I'll say, okay. And basically what's going to happen is if I go to my activity log, I will now see here at the bottom a section that says add hours. Now I won't actually be able to add hours to this event that I signed up for until after the event has passed. So right now you can see it's grayed out. But once the event has passed, um, the student will be able to click on the add hours button and submit hours for that particular opportunity. And it'll have some of the information pre-filled out for them already. So that really covers the student side of X2Vol and we also looked at the administrative side. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to our support team um, and you can do that via email at support at intellivol.com. That's I-N-T-E-L-L-I-V-O-L.com or you can call us direct at 866-906-6400. Thanks so much.